What's going on, my St. Louis City fam? I'm your girl, Kelly, here to give you the rundown on what happened in St. Louis City government this week, and I'm going to get right into it with, I think I got three highlights, and then rounding out with the legislative corner with past legislation this week. So, first highlight, there was a Parks and Environmental Matters Committee meeting this week, and um, a couple of things were discussed. So first um, was uh, the discussion of the finalizing of park improvement projects in the city um, and funding for these projects comes from um, the parks fund, I guess. And basically the committee, so there is a list laying out again all of these park improvements uh, for all the wars throughout the city of St. Louis. Um, However, there were members of the committee that expressed the need to kind of review the list to make sure those are all the park improvements throughout the wards. And apparently uh, with this process for these parks to be approved and then the funding to be appropriated to, you know, improve those particular projects on that list, the it has to be prepared in the form of a resolution. So uh, that's something that the committee will be um, working on. Something else I was mentioning during the discussion of uh, the parks, you know, the different projects and improvements um, throughout the cities and their parks, Alderman Bosley, he expressed his concerns because apparently $400,000, yes, $400,000 uh, was spent on the pool in Fairgrounds Park. And he ain't know nothing about it, okay? And he said he had other ideas on how that coin, because I mean, $400,000, that's, that's damn near half a million dollars. So he said he had some other ways and some other ideas on how that coin could have been spent, um, you know, to make a larger impact, right, within the park. And moving forward, he just said, look, to the parks people, he'd appreciate improved communication about these matters. Something else that was mentioned in the meeting um, was a discussion around park rangers. So apparently park rangers, you know, they, the only thing they can do when it comes to monitoring and enforcement, when it comes to people doing like stuff they ain't supposed to be doing in parks, they just issue tickets to people, which that ain't going to do a damn thing. So the discussion was really about figuring out how to improve or increase the enforcement authority that park rangers have to really make sure that the monitoring of, of people that ain't doing what they're supposed to be doing in parks, like people really get, um, there's some type of repercussions for their actions. So something I learned, the park rangers, they fall under the umbrella or whatever, of the police department. So I'm sure there's more to come um, around that conversation as well. And again, next steps for the Parks and Environmental Matters Committee is to finalize that list uh, with regards to the park improvements in all the wards throughout the city so they can get the resolution prepared, get it passed through the full board of aldermen so our parks can be improved. The next update I wanted to mention or highlight rather is yes, redistricting. Cause y'all know we are in redistricting season. So there will be a rough draft of the new map for the city of St. Louis available online on Monday, November 1st, 2021. Yes, y'all, a map, a rough draft of the new map for our city will be publicly available and accessible on Monday, November 1st, 2021, y'all. And the public can weigh in on how they feel. So you go online, you look at the map, you're like, mm, I ain't feeling it. Um, there are opportunities for you to weigh in and provide feedback on what you don't like about the map and what needs to be changed. Uh, there are various ways to provide your feedback. So one, there will be public hearings uh, on Tuesday, November 2nd, as well as Wednesday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. via Zoom. 
Um, also, you can provide your feedback via uh, the online portal that's supported by the city of St. Louis government. And then lastly, but certainly not least, you can also provide your feedback via phone call as well. So there is a flyer that kind of lays out this information um, with regards to, you know, the Zoom meeting details. It also provides the link to uh, the portal, the redistricting portal, what have you. Um, and that's also where the map will be accessible. And there's also a number that is provided on this flyer for you to call and provide your feedback on the map or just on the process in general. So I will be sure to post the flyer on all of Evolve's beautiful platform so you can, you know, keep that information. And definitely provide your feedback and weigh in on this process, on this map. Uh, yeah. And also remember, sharing is caring. So share that with your neighbors, your friends, people you ain't really that cool with, but you still talk to, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cause yeah, this is all about, this is really important because this is all about um, our representation, our power um, in the city of St. Louis. So yeah, it's, it's kind of a big deal, y'all. And then the next thing I really wanted to mention, I really wanted to mention, who child, the loop trolley. Yeah, y'all, so East West Gateway Council of Governments, they held a meeting on Wednesday to determine if federal uh, coin through grant funding would be accepted, roughly $1.3 million to help with getting the trolley up and running again. Yes, y'all. And for people that aren't familiar with East West Gateway, so East West Gateway, quote, provides a forum where local governments in the bi-state region can coordinate and work together to address and solve problems that cross jurisdictional boundaries. So literally everybody in a mama that is affiliated, associated, um, make decisions within local governments, they sit on this board. So there's representation from the city of St. Louis. So our mayor, Tashara Jones, she sits on that board. There's representation from St. Louis County. So County Executive Sam Page, he sits on that board. And also folks that represent, you know, on the east side in Illinois, they sit on that board. And also folks that represent St. Charles and just, you know, other local governments throughout our region, they all sit on this board. So what happened? So on Wednesday, East West Gateway rejected the proposed $1.3 million of federal coin that potentially could have been received through federal grant funding. So even though they rejected the proposal as a group, uh, Mayor Tashara Jones and County Executive Sam Page, they supported the passage of the proposal under the condition that by stake took over the operations of the trolley. So they issued a joint statement about this, and this is their statement. Quote, we all agree that no more St. Louis County and city funds should go to the loop trolley. Today's vote was about accepting federal funds to keep the federal government happy. We hope the St. Louis region is not penalized by the federal government and future transportation funding or other infrastructure projects as a result of this decision. Yeah, y'all. So the trolley is dead. It's deaded. However, I don't know, I just, I have this feeling this ain't the last time we're going to be talking about this damn trolley, but that's just in my opinion, my humble opinion. All right, y'all, I'm rounding out with the legislative corner. So there were a few bills passed uh, earlier today during the Board of Aldermen meeting, and I just, I just kind of wanted to mention them so y'all were aware. So first, the mask mandate was extended for another day. 30 days within the city of St. Louis. Something else, uh, board bill 92, it was passed. Um, in this bill, it literally, um, it specifies that there has to be greater than a majority of votes from the board of aldermen to overturn a decision made by the planning commission. So essentially this piece of legislation, it kind of gives more consideration and it adds, you know, a little bit more weight to the planning commission and their recommendations. 
And then there were also uh, legislation that was approved that, or excuse me, that passed that approved some redevelopment plans. And I had mentioned this in the past, I don't know, a couple weeks ago during some committee meetings. So um, there is a project slated on uh, Lindell and Grand, some redevelopment there, basically Jesuit Hall, uh, SLU Nation. Um, so that bill was passed regarding that redevelopment plan. Also, um, the redevelopment plan regarding uh, the Butler Brothers building on 1717 Olive Street, that was passed today. Another piece of legislation passed approves a blighting study for the West Florissant Avenue, DeSoto Avenue, and East Warney Avenue area. And then lastly, but certainly not least, uh, there was a bill passed authorizing the bonds for the Delhi Star Corporation not to exceed $37 million, which, again, I spoke to at length weeks ago. So that's all I have for you this week, y'all. Please stay safe out there, and you will see me soon. Peace.